Uh, a couple weeks on the beach. We'll do the same. Okay, seven o'clock. <laughs> all right. I think we're all here. All right. I'm called. To Planning Commission and Board of Zoning Appeals. Has anybody had a chance to review those? And did you find any corrections or alterations necessary? And I'll abstain from voting. You'll abstain. All okay. right. We got one abstention. Looking for a motion. I move that we accept the uh, Andover City Planning Commission Board of Zoning Appeals minutes from June twentieth, two thousand seventeen. Okay. We have a motion. I'll second that. And a second by Tyson. All in favor say aye. 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 And one abstention. <clears throat> okay. We have some communications. Uh, don't believe we have a subdivision, subdivision committee report, but we do have uh, the potential residential development sheet. And any questions or concerns there? No. Nope. Okay. Seeing none. Um, move on to our first case. We have a <coughs> vacation case. It's a vacation V case number VA 2017-01. There's a public hearing for a petition for a vacation beginning at the northwest corner of a 20-foot rear yard. Uh, drainage and utility easement. Uh, I believe we saw this once before and we tabled it. Uh, well, I'm not sure, was that the 20th meeting? I think it was. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, everybody's shaking their head. Yeah, 20th. So I think sounds like things have been resolved. Um, this was a uh, looks like a wall that was going up in the backyard. Is that right? That's correct. All right, Les, maybe you could tee us up on a the latest <laughs> news on this. Well, you remember at the last meeting there were uh, some concerns that were raised by several of the public utility providers as well as the city engineer and stormwater operator about drainage. Those issues have all been cleared up with the utility providers and the engineer over the course of the last month. So. Okay. Yeah, I did read through the correspondence and it looks like all the utilities have provide a written uh, communication. Um, I see that part of the wall is built and was the rest of the wall to the property lines built or did it stay in this configuration? Uh, Phil Myers here from Boffman Company. If you have specific questions, I, I don't know all okay. of the details about the latest construction. Okay. Um, all right. Well, if there's no other questions of staff, I might ask Phil to come up and speak to us. Good evening. <clears throat> Phil Meyer with Boffman Company, agent for the applicant. Um, to answer your question, the, <clears throat> the wall is basically complete. There's still some finished work to do on the face of it, but it's not going, the wall's not going to be extended further east or further west. What what you've seen out there okay. is, is what's going to be constructed. So it looks like it's about six foot tall, is that right? Yes. Well, maybe a touch higher? Pardon me? Maybe it's a little bit higher than six feet or? I think it's six foot tall. Okay. Um, it could be seven. I did meet with, <clears throat> we had both, AT&T has always supported the request Cox was opposed to it. Weststar wanted some more time to look at it and review it. Both uh, utility companies, Weststar did approve it after we gave them a little bit more information. I did meet Cox in the field and walk the site. They did approve it. 
Um, we do a 20 foot utility easement in rear yards basically so that the private utility companies can occupy 10 foot of it. Public sewer can take, sanitary sewer can take the other 10 foot. 10 foot is a normal width for utility companies if that's all that's going to be in there is the private utility company. So they were all supportive of that. We just needed to, we did another one call and met Cox and showed them that there are no lines on this side of the, the 10 foot. So all these photos with the utility <coughs> markings, those are all um, north of the site or service lines is what? They're service lines service that lines. come across, but gotcha. the actual line running and all the boxes sit on the north side of the wall. Okay. Um, and I noticed that it looks like the wall on your depiction here, your survey, it stops short of the property corners, so the east and west property corners. Is that intended to be? Yeah, that it's intended, and that um, wrought iron fence will stay in we'll place, cutting okay. up against the decorative wall. Okay. All right. That answers, I think, all the questions I had. If there are any other questions. Nope. No, not here. No. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, at this time, I'll open up the uh, public hearing to any others who'd like to speak on this matter. And I see none. So we'll go ahead and close the, the public hearing with regard to this case. Any discussions on the bench here? None here. No discussion needed? Okay. Um, I think due diligence has been done here extensively, and so um, I'd entertain a motion for approval or denial. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we approve the request as presented. All righty. We have a motion by Lynn Heath. I'll second it. And second by William. All in favor, say aye. 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 Um, motion passes and unanimously. Okay, thank you. Well, it uh, looks like we have a special <coughs> use case. Uh, this is uh, item number six, SU 2017-01. This is a public hearing on an application for a special use request to establish a plumbing and restoration service contractor in the B5 Highway Business District on property located at 1032 West U.S. Highway 54 in Andover. Uh, s staff sees no reason not to approve this request conditioned on the installation of required rear yard screening fence and uh, screening of any outdoor storage and materials and or equipment okay Les, if you could give us a little background on why this special use is necessary and and it's uh, maybe t talk to a little bit about what makes this case unique this property is currently zoned B5 Highway Business District and has been for many, many years. Uh, it has been a single family home over the years. Most recently it was a, a kind of a retail type store. The current owner is a plumber and does restoration work and he would intends to use this as his contractor shop for his plumbing business and may have some outdoor storage of maybe a piece of equipment or some materials which requires a special use in the B5 highway business district just just to add that word contractor mm, okay so that's a little bit of what makes this unique okay and how does the, I, I I've looked at the highway corridor plan and and it, this property is impacted in 
somewhat substantially across the front of their property. Um, are we going to look to speak to any of those items at this hearing? In the long term, this property would be impacted by the highway frontage roads. But as you recall, that's a very long term plan mm -hmm. and a project that is over 10 years out in the future. Okay. So the front building setback is maybe uh, 20, 35 feet. 35 feet. 25. 25. And the only other question I had um, specific to the corridor plan was um, ac access is, is it, um, do, I presume they understand that the access off will be a one way across the frontage uh, and and uh, along the uh, side road will be you know, possibly even limited there as well. Correct, we just had a, a little discussion before the meeting about access onto Ruth Street that there may be some limitations there because of its proximity to the highway frontage road. Okay. So and the, the applicant understands all the implications to the special special use and as it relates to the long range plans for the corridor. Yes, there there will be some restrictions over time. Good. Is there a shared building? To the west, I'm looking at yeah. this overview here. That aerial photo appears as though it's off maybe six or eight or ten feet. There's a jog in it? Yes, which is fairly common with aerial photos. And but am I looking at the roof the, line of a building there? or Yes, that is a building. There is a, a jog in that west property line that goes out and around an existing building. So it doesn't go down through the middle of it. It does not go through the middle of the building. All right. There was a survey and a lot split. It's a little further left ago. than what it shows there, huh? Yes. And you'll notice the properties to the south towards the bottom of the photo. The fences don't line up either. And okay, you, yeah. even if you look at the Ruth Street, mm -hmm. you'll notice that the it's a little shift. street is off to the west side so there's just a little error in the mm -hmm. aerial okay. photography okay so presumably the, there's um, ample separation between the two buildings for fire reasons uh -huh. and such yes there was a, a lot split many years ago okay now the fencing requirement what will that entail on the east west and the south sides it would be required along the south side of the property to screen the multifamily residences to the south. And then if there are any outdoor storage, it would be required to screen the multifamily residences across the street on roof. Okay. How about a landscape plan or buffer along along this, uh, either Ruth or even the frontage? A landscape buffer isn't required. Okay. In this, in this scenario, a screening fence is required. I know that the corridor plan talks about, uh, a lot about landscaping and our, uh, yeah, at what time are we gonna start kind of pushing people into uh, trying to meet some of those requirements? I'm sure as properties turn around with the uh, highway freeway development there will be a lot of new site plans to come down the pike okay if they came in and requested a zoning change or something like that then we can do mm. more well, this is this is a case right here though well it's special use yeah yeah and does the property share a cross lot agreement with the property to the west I understand that it does. Okay. Okay. Any other questions of staff? I think I've shot off a few here. I'm done. <laughs> All righty. Um, 
maybe if we could hear from the uh, applicant and owner. <coughs> My name is Brett Moore. I'm the owner of PD Plumbing and Restoration. So if you have any questions, just ask me. I don't really have anything to add. I think you guys covered a lot of uh, what we would intend to say or questions that we had. So. Sure. Uh, you do understand the, the US 54 corridor plan. I think that's the one question I had. Yeah. And, okay. Yeah. And the implications of that. Mm -hmm. um, and then I. You know, you do. I presume you have a uh, some sort of cross lot agreement with the people to the west. Is that in place, or yeah, is there's it one in place? A yeah. gentleman's type agreement, or, or a written legal document. I think it's. Uh, I wouldn't. I, it's more of a gentleman's agreement. Now I don't know what uh, is actually on the deed or. Uh, okay. In the past, we just purchased it. So. Okay. Yep. Any other? Is there security lights for the back lot for your materials, buildings, and so forth? I believe so, on the uh, garage door that's in the back. And that's the limitation of it? Uh, not going to be any higher than that? Uh, not currently, no. We have plans to put uh, a pull-up and put security cameras on it, uh, which would probably include some lighting of some sort. Concerned about the neighbors to the east there? Uh, just, it's on a highway, so... I live on a highway uh, in Augusta, so we just always are kind of concerned about someone strolling through town or uh, sees equipment back there or something and decides to go check it out when we're not there. So as far as the fence, too, we already have plans uh, to fence that off and then gravel it so it gives us, uh, you know, a nice clean place to put equipment and stuff like that. What's your signage going to entail? Um, well, so it's something we've been thinking about, but we don't have any set plans yet. Um, okay. There's some signage there that we're thinking about refacing. Um, but one of the things we're wanting to do is look into having a, a pole sign, um, something like that, or a marquee sign of some sort that is backlit and uh, more modern looking. Okay. So that question is actually something we were going to yeah. speak with uh, the right people about on, on what would be allowed or uh, what we could do there. Okay. So you'll be parking overnight on the property in the rear or in the front, or how does that work? Our uh, employees take their vehicles home, um, so there won't be personal vehicles there. There might be an office manager or secretary that would be there who would park in the front. Um, equipment, you know, a trailer or something like that would be parked in the rear on the, on the rock pad that we're going to, you know, put in. Mm -hmm. Is it less, is there any paving requirement, or is a rock pad allowed? Paving's only required of the required parking and access. So the storage yard isn't required. Only those spaces like at the front of the building for the public. Okay. Currently there's uh, paved parking out there with handicap accessible slot and then also uh, it's, it, the building's handicap accessible as well. Okay. And the, any other questions? No, All right. Well, thank you, uh, yep. Mr. Moore. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Well, we have a couple housekeeping items to take care of. Yeah. Those. And well, I thought I'd start with just some of our disqualifications and so forth. So, um, are, does anybody have any uh, ex parte communication on this site? Mm -hmm. No. Um, I will. I will. Yeah. I'm just going to go through a couple items here. Um, and then uh, no one needs to disqualify themselves. Okay. No. All right. Now we'll go ahead and open up to, for public comment. My name is Cindy Ball. 
Uh, my husband and I own the property directly west of the uh, subject property. Uh, in answer to your question about the uh, access along the back of the lot, there is a dedicated easement for egressing across there. Okay. Uh, along with the jog up front is a, allows them a parking easement to satisfy the required parking spaces. So that's why all the jogging around the building and so forth. Okay. Uh, that was done um, when we got our special use permit and did the lot split. So that's been in place for many, many years. Okay. Um, we are in favor of the approval of the special use permit. A couple of issues that I would like to speak to are mainly to do with the screening and the fencing. The screening along the south property line would be a duplication of the screening of the residential screening behind us. As you can tell, there's a large amount of space between the residents on that street and they are fenced with privacy fence in their backyards now. That lot is huge and as my understanding is it has already got all the buildings on it that it can have. It's not multifamily. I believe it's only zoned for the duplexes that are on it so no additional construction can occur there. So I feel like screening along the south property line would simply be a duplication of the fencing that's already there. The area where Mr. Moore plans to store his equipment and supplies outside, it sounds like he plans to anyway, but I would like to see that area screened only because of the experience that we've had in that area with break-ins and theft. Uh, prior to us enclosing our area where we park our equipment and store supplies, uh, we had a number of break-ins back there. Uh, once we've enclosed that and keep our equipment parked in there at night, we've not had any break-ins. Even when we had our truck parked out front, it was broken into. So <laughs> uh, just in order to keep the uh, crime level down in that area, um, I would request that you require that screening to take place or not screening but fencing for security purposes and that's really all that i had any questions for the speaker do you happen to have any screening behind your business between your business and the, the residential lot is there anything between you guys we do not when we got our special use permit, there was no residential building behind us okay. at that time. But like I said, they've already put up fences, yeah. and it's such a huge distance between them. Sounds like overkill. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Now, the overview that I'm looking at here shows a dirt pad driveway coming in off of uh, Ruth there. Yes, that's our easement there. Okay. Is that going, are we fencing in at that point? I think we're fencing at the south property line. Well, that looks real close together. <laughs> yeah. The so they will not have access from Ruth to the back of their property. Well, I would hope that you would allow any fencing to be placed on the other side of that driveway. Otherwise, we will have to park on the street, open a gate, and access it that way. Well, that needs. But it needs is to be an access driveway. At some point. Yeah. I I think the the screening and fencing should be on the property line and and not offset because then that puts the burden on the adjoining owner uh, right. to the south of seeing traffic coming in and out and uh, seeing potentially seeing equipment on the outside. So I well, I there's think there's no parking in the, in the driveway. That is an excess drive that we have a, a legal easement to. Mm -hmm. It's been that way for ten ish years, mm -hmm. plus or minus. Yeah, I just that's how I see it. Is the screening should go on the property line, the, and if you need to move your drive a little bit further north, so be it. Well, that is that is the south property line where I was discussing that would be double screening. 
because the adjacent properties already have screening. You can see on the, on the overhead picture that they yeah. have fencing. I can't tell. I can't tell. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think I understand. Privacy fence across their backyards. Right. It's their it's their privacy fence, not not this business's privacy fence. Well, like Sheridan and Devil shouldn't have to duplicate it. Well, they could have a bigger backyard if they wanted to as well. The uh, site plan committee uh, criteria re allows for at the discretion of the site plan or the planning commission that if the adjacent property has adequate screening that the additional screening may be a duplication and therefore not be required yeah yep. okay any other questions of Oh, okay. I thought it was back on the back property line. All right. Now, yeah, there, there's no use of that open area. Nobody ever does anything with it but mow it. But for security reasons for the business, we're still looking at having some need for fencing there at the yeah. back of their property. Yeah, I think they want it for security. Correct. It's it's their i mean it's these duplica duplexes they could always redevelop into I, something yeah, I, more intense right. use and to me we're granting a special use for outdoor storage therefore screening is required at the property line and recommended so i that's yeah. that's yeah. pretty cut and dry and there are sewer easements across this this was a real mess when it started out <laughs> there are sewer lines that run from our both of uh, my lot and mr moore's lot that run south across the residential lots, their sewer easements, their private sewer lines, they're not sewer mains. At one point in time, of course, the same person all owned all four of those lots and just kind of did whatever. Mm -hmm. so, so when we got our special use permit, we worked with Les to try to get all that cleaned up. But the sewer lines and easements across there pretty much prohibit any further construction on that lot. Okay. Well, I'm not sure I fully understand that, but I, I do understand that this isn't served by public sewer, and I, I find that a little bit troubling, you know, if it, that this wouldn't be served by public sewer. So it's served by public sewer. By, via private agreements, and I think that's the part that I have an no, issue it, with. The, the sewer lines were initially installed from the buildings to the private sewer. They were just on, the, the lots were all owned by the same person at the time. Mm -hmm. So when the lot splits were done, sewer easements were granted in the lot split. But are they granted to the public or are they private easements? They're private easements. Yeah, I think they need to be public easements to get these so these properties aren't isolated by, uh, by sewer. And I did notice that on the sewer map online that this site doesn't have access to sewer, direct access to sewer. So that is a concern of mine that we need to probably have a look at and address. And if they're not public easements, we need to obtain public easements for the for the sewer that needs to serve the, these two properties. I don't know that we have any way to compel those two owners to grant public easements. They were given private sewer easements when it was all under one ownership. Uh huh. It would probably be more of a liability to the city than anything because then you would be responsible for maintaining the lines and they're just typical private lines. They're not public sewer lines. Well, I think but all the properties that are in Andover need to be served by Andover sewer. And, you know, I, I, if there's not an Andover easement that's provided to that property, I, I see that as a bit of an issue. And maybe Steve Anderson or Les could expound on on that no okay hmm. i think that's beyond our what we're doing here let's see press on 
Well, I don't. Maybe we need a little more background information to be provided to us on the lot split and the easements that were obtained at that time. I'm having trouble understanding where you're headed with this. Um, you have four properties that are all served by public sewer. It which just, it which just happens that two have private easements across another property to attach to the public main. Right. So that in a perfect world, that sewer would be adjacent to each and every track. Mm -hmm. It isn't, but there is a means there to assure that they're connected. A private means. A private means, yes. I'm going to tell you this is not the only one of these <laughs> skeletons in the closet. That's sure. That's kind of what I was insinuating to yeah. press on. <laughs> yeah. <I'd, laughs> uh, it, it does seem. Yeah. Please. Uh, yes. You don't have It's required to be served if it's within 200 feet. 200. Well, if these matters of sewer, I mean, have been addressed at a later, earlier point in time, and staff is okay with that, I, I don't have as much heartburn. I do think that it's important to make sure all of the parcels that we're zoning and of course getting plotted through our body need to be served by public sewer or public infrastructure and uh, that's of course a concern that I have and but if if staff feels that they've achieved everything in the past I think that they're the ones who have to deal with the problems when someone's sewer line service line gets broken and is now flooding someone's yard with sewage uh, so that's kind of where I'm at with it with I would ask that if you decide that you require screening on the south property line that you consider leaving the driveway access open for ingress ingress and egress at that opening well I don't know that that's up that's our call on that is it isn't that the property owners yeah I mean that's and we're going to require the screening <laughs> I, I have no doubt about that well, but your access, this, and that's why I brought it up, as I see access to your property back there, that's right. not going to be there now. Well, the the screening a lot, depending on the screening for the area that they're going to be storing, would the area that they're going to be storing things would stop before the driveway, so the screening along Ruth Street should be able to be stopped in the same manner as which where they stop storing. They're not going to store in the driveway. So that's all I'm saying there is there's an opening with a culvert. It's a driveway onto Ruth Street. Mm -hmm. There will be no storage there. I would think that you'd be able to leave that open. Or at a worst case, put a gate and with access for everybody. If you do that, we're going to have to stop on the street. There's no yeah, place to pull that's off. That's true. Mm -hmm. Yep, you got a point. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We've had other similar cases like this in the past, and this, the screening has been required along the property line, and I, I don't see us getting around that uh, in this case. So any... But they also have to have access. Well, they, they have access at two points on their property. But she doesn't. Mm, She's no, we only have access across the back. Okay, well... That's your private agreement, and if you need to amend your private agreement, that I... Well, it's so not a you. private agreement. It's a, a recorded easement. Right. It's a, a private recorded easement, as far as I know. I don't know that it's a it's public easement. It's recorded with the Register of Deeds office. Right. But it's, it's not a public easement that's dedicated to the city of Andover. It's a private agreement between the two parties, unless, unless you can t show me otherwise that it's also a party to the it's city of Andover. not a dedicated Andover. public street, no. Okay. 
I'm not sure the benefit to the public by blocking that because there is nothing to screen. It's a driveway. Okay. Any other questions? None here. Okay. Thank you. Uh -uh. Yes, sir. I just wanted to point out um, there could be utilities on that property line. I'm not sure, and maybe Les would know, that run east and west. Yeah. I, I, know, no, I know of no easement that has been provided to us. I'm not aware of an easement along that line. So, is the uh, is there a setback as far as the fencing goes or the screening? Uh, there's a there's a building setback, and uh, the what I'm saying is the screening needs to be on your zoning line, not offset. Okay. Um, it needs to be where the zone change occurs. A screening. And, what what kind of material are you guys uh, saying that should be used on that? Well, we haven't we haven't gotten to that point just yet. Okay. But it would be there be you know may, some sort of solid screening, not not opaque. Okay. And would it be possible to uh, fence in a certain distance off of the uh, south ingress egress, um, so that someone could safely pull in there and be off of Ruth Street to open a gate? and then have the other fence on the property lines? Les, is it possible to make the screening uh, on the north of the driveway instead of on the south? So that the driveway is outside the screened in area? Again, if we lived in a perfect world, we wouldn't be having this discussion. Well, I know. But I'm, we're talking existing I'm, conditions here. That's uh, why I'm bringing this up. This is a unique case. That access case and, easement complicates that a little bit. There is nothing that would prohibit you from allowing that screening fence to be placed on the north side of the access easement. I understand Brian's concern that that leaves the driveway open to view. Yeah, it's not a paved driveway. It's a dirt road. And I don't think that that should be burdened on the adjoining property. I think, you know, if you need to put in a, a actuated gate that, you know, you just like a clicker, I got a clicker for my garage. You can get a clicker to click your gate open. To me, that's something that's just another operating expense on your business. There was one more thing I wanted to clear up that I don't, I'm not sure if everybody was aware, but the uh, private sewer easements run uh, north and south. There's a white spot uh, behind Cindy Ball's property um, to the almost to the property line on the west. I believe that's her clean out and just to right about where the uh, the tip of the bubble that says the address there uh, where the point is would be our clean out and they basically run straight back um, huh. to whatever the next street is on the south. Les, do you, do you recall if they run between the houses or if they run on the outside of the houses? That I don't recall. Okay. Well, I think we've just resolved the, the fact that we're not going to address the sewer at this time, so I don't know that that's an issue as far as where the clean-outs are. If you need to move your clean-out due to the, the drive line, you know, I, I just wanted to provide that information in case sure. it was useful. So. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. All right, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. If there's any other buddy out here to talk about this case, if not, I will close the public hearing. All righty. All righty, we have some discussion at the bench here. Is there any way, Brian, that they could leave that portion open? Well, Where's I think that? there could be a gate there. Yeah, they I could put a gate. Just talking about. Right, but it can't. It just can't be open. It can't be left open. Right, you can put in a, a gate that slides north and south, uh, actuated at that point. Mm -hmm. Is what I'm getting at. Right. But that, uh, what, it, uh, what requires that? 
us well we've got outdoor storage so that's what we're, we're requiring uh screening for yeah. due to outdoor storage but it, it but you have to have a gate it's required to have a gate for access well i think th they have well, they I'm have concerned about what you think i'm asking what the rules are they have the access it's their gate it's no different than if you had a gate on the back of your lot and you need to be able to get to your shed or whatever but it's, why do you, is it required to have a gate is what i'm asking well it is it's because not, of their agreement it's huh? not required to have a gate across that driveway that's what i'm asking yeah they probably in their agreement there's probably required that she they have well, to that, keep it that's open their problem. that's that's right that's not ours but so we're here we to have to have a gate there then what are we this don't have a gate well i see it as an existing condition that we need to acknowledge and um you know it <coughs> seems prudent to be for the operation of both businesses that are uh working in our community so i'm confused so what, what did you just say what the what i said is that you know there's there is an a functional private alley there that has access there's a legal agreement between the two of some sort that we aren't necessarily privy to it is recorded the register deeds so we could get it however is there a requirement for a gate nothing that we can dictate but I, it, if there is a gate it needs to be screened and and you know an opaque screen fence of some sort yep Okay, good. So they could have a gate there and leave it open all the time? I suppose. I don't know if that's a security problem. <laughs> I think that's kind of what they're saying is that they want to well, secure just, the premises. I'm, I'm to make the rule, I'll figure out what the real rules are here, not what somebody want, wants. Uh -huh. What I would like the, to see, I want to know what the rules are and what the requirements are. The screening wouldn't be required across the driveway. So, it, so could they could leave it, open open it could be left open during business hours or it could be chain link um there are residences across the street from it i think it'd be appropriate to screen them uh have an opaque screen fence so that w when uh when there's things stacked up and debris back there that they don't have to visually see it but, but it'd be on it'd be on the ground pardon me would it be on the drive? I mean, nothing will be stacked on the drive. Presumably nothing, but yeah, you'll have a view of it. My only worry is the like blocking of traffic down Ruth Street, unless, like you said, they get the quicker fence. <laughs> mm -hmm. I just, you know, I would hate to live here and not be able to get home because somebody stopped right here. Right. Well, sure. A gate. position in an effort to move things along <laughs> perhaps there could be a jog in that fence at a point that left a little pull-off area off of Ruth Street yeah. perhaps that jog could be 30 or 40 feet so that a truck and trailer could get off of the road to open the okay. gate Any other ideas? No, I'm good. Just trying to dictate between uh, requirements and what we'd like. Yeah. Is it saying. required to screen a driveway or is it required to screen storage? The requirement, the requirement is to, uh, we, we have a parcel that's gonna be allowed to have outdoor storage. <coughs> Therefore, the requirement to screen the property from adjacent residential properties is what we're looking for. And that's, it's pretty cut and pretty simple, cut and dry. I mean, you know, there's, there's going to be a screening plan and that's either going to be a masonry, masonry screening or, op, you know, some sort of opaque wood fencing or, or other material, uh, similar, similar type that we'll 
sort out here. But we don't sort it out. That's the site committee. Um, say, is that part of what we are deciding on here? Or? I, you know, it's a we, it's we a decide on whether there's going to be one or not. Right. Then the site committee decide on it, what it's going to be. Yeah, I don't. Would this even go to the site? No, I I didn't think so. This is simple a, fence permit. A once and done deal. So what if it was screened all the way through on both so sides? Simple wooden fence. So screened on the south side of of the property line. The property line south and also the south side of. Well, I think we only need one on the south line and the the east line of the property where there would be right. a view of the outdoor storage. I don't think so. So does everybody, <laughs> does everybody on the, the bench here understand that we need screening on both screen the here, east property line and, and the south here. property line? So that I there's don't I, at least access. Did you say we did or did not need screening on this list a few minutes ago? You need screening on both the south and the east. Okay. Yeah, it's something like that. 100% screening. The driveways aren't required to be right. opaque so. screened. Now, is this a... Uh, I mean, this isn't the first time stuff's been stored behind this building. Is this a new requirement, or what's the? Because it's a contractor's shop. Okay. There could be materials and equipment stored behind this building. <clears throat> but they were, there's material and equipment been stored behind this building before, and there wasn't one. Possibly. Okay. I'm just wondering what the rule change was that requires screening now and didn't require screening for the There last shouldn't have been years. outdoor storage without screening. Huh? There shouldn't have been outdoor storage without screening in the past. Oh, okay. It was, okay. Hmm. <laughs> but they do not have to have screening at the driveway. Correct. Thank you. And part of the screening is security too. So, you know, that's but what that's we're up talking to about. Yeah. That's, that's up, up to the, the, uh, the building owner, the yeah. property owner. Yeah. Does the driveway have to be inside the fencing? <clears throat> is that, I mean, maybe that's an aesthetics thing, but is it? Because then the property to the south see that driveway already? But not with storage. Right. But the storage will be still have a fence but between the storage fence on and the north side of the driveway. That's what I brought up. Why why the fencing are we, are screening we can't be ten feet north. I think for practicality it's best to just screen on the property line because that drive may not always be there. You know, the screening is gonna be established now and I think, you know, we're it's a small enough lot as it is, uh, to have to negotiate uh fencing on not uh, you know outside the property line i think to me it's uh well can't just a simple thing to me if the screen is retire required just to be the, the owner should have a say in where they want the screening that they need this here for security i mean then they can do that sort of i don't think uh, you know that's probably the easiest the screen is required put the dang fence where you want it yeah well so uh, so out the storage has to be with within that screening area right and if you would please come up to the mic again this goes back to the original owner and the builder of the building that we own the space between the two buildings is just enough to drive a regular passenger vehicle through you can't drive any kind of uh, large van or box truck or anything mm -hmm. so the only access to the back of our property for our uh, commercial vehicles is that back access mm -hmm. that's going to be true of any build anybody that would ever use that facility for contracting business so that back access driveway is most likely always going to be needed because there's just no other way to access the back of that lot between the buildings. Yeah. I mean, I can barely drive uh, a GMC Yukon through there. It'll fit, but you have to be very careful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
I think if if they need more room, they, there's certainly an ample space between the single family or the duplexes to the south that they could obtain more land to move drives or such. I think that's, everybody knows that's I, not an option. I'd say just requirement for the fence where they want to put it, as long as it's within a um, 15 feet of the back property line. I got a question for the applicant on that. Is there a prescribed width on that access easement? Is there a prescribed width on that access easement to get to the west lot? Is it You're 10 saying feet, it's recorded, 20 feet? like the recorded with the registered deeds? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure on that. 20, feet. The, if we put a uh, if we put a fence in there um, and it wasn't on the property line, then we would lose the ability to use it for what we need that turnaround area for right it. that's exactly what i was saying it's a small enough area already just well, put the I well i'll say what we would want to do is probably bump that fence up to the back of the shed that's there so that we need the ability to pull in there and pull out so we have a 20-foot trailer with a f-350 to pull equipment mm -hmm. and getting in right now is a chore and not hitting something mm -hmm. um as it sits right now on the west side of that shed you know we have to pull in and and back up to get parked or come in through the south side and then pull up back to the other driveway where that point of that bubble is by that clean out I pointed out earlier. So um, our intention was to gravel that area and then cut a couple trees down on the west side of that shed so where we could come in from the south drive that we're talking about that's the ingress egress to pull through um, so we don't have to do a lot of maneuvering and, and try to get in and out of there. And then the culverts that are in there are pretty narrow. So pulling out and, and then it's a really narrow road with a steep uh, ditch on both sides. So it's it's pretty difficult as it sits right now to get in. Yeah. So I would just hate to have it, you know, unless it's required um, in a spot where it would prevent us from getting in and out and using it properly too. I think the further south you go, the less storage you're going to have and the harder it is for you going to get get your vehicles in and out of the property we would, with a fence we would like it probably further north um it's, i'm not sure if you guys could clarify on the storage what are we talking about vehicles or material every yeah any, any kind of outdoor storage is is going to be considered outdoor storage yep. so um that'd be a lot of area for us to to fence in and then if we didn't it'd kind of be a waste of uh space outside the fence that wouldn't really be usable because it would That's be behind it, so. yeah so anything outside any, anything south of that fence you won't be able to store stuff in right yep um but but sacrificing the amount of storage out there would be worth it to be able to actually use it as a circle driveway to get in and out Well, it's not your normal size street there. It's pretty narrow. There's uh, steep ditches on both the east and west side. So, uh -huh. but most of our stuff, uh, other than vehicles or equipment, would be stored inside the uh, in the building or the shed. Just valuable equipment or material that we wouldn't want to get stolen. Um, if if I mean we're going to be required to put the fence up or the screening if it's required to be on the property line then where do we where would we start and end it on the west side of that west drive at west the west at the west property corner is where you'd start and stop your uh your fencing the, at the west end you would start it at the west end of your property corner and extend all the way to the east to the right of way and then from the right of way you would go north to the extent of your outdoor storage. You're saying in the rear of the property? Mm -hmm. Yes, along the rear of the property, along the east of the property line is where we're gonna have the fencing, uh, where we need to have screening. Mm. Okay. Where it abuts the single, you know, the residential zoning. So is there a, a dictation on where it would be on the south side of the building then? 
if you're saying running east and west to the property lines? So the address, um, fit, uh, is that a fit, 522 Ruth, it would need to go to the north property line of Ruth, of that, of that lot, at least. The, the north property line is uh, that's, that's right. It's basically driveway. right in the frontage road there. I mean, yeah. it, it ends about four foot before the road stops. Okay, I understand. Oh. Mm -hmm. And let, I mean, I don't think you're going to put any outdoor storage along the side of that building, are you? No. Okay, well then that's the answer. Okay. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. All right. Any more deliberation here? Everybody understand what we're looking for? All right, we have uh, 17 findings and factors to go through. William, do you want to get, take those on? Sure. Thank you. Number one. Let's see here. What are the existing uses and their character and condition on the subject property and in the surrounding neighborhood? I think we've or we've been discussing that. We've seen that on the the site plan. There's you know residential abutting the south and and the east and the east yeah so planning commission is yes yeah we've acknowledged it number two what is the current zoning of the subject property and that of the surrounding neighborhood in relationship to the requested change See adjacent zoning on page one of four. Mm -hmm. Yes, for uh, is that R three to the? I'm sorry, Lynn. Is that R three to the south? Yeah. Right. Yes. That's what I thought. R three B five and uh, that's it. The road. Number three is the length of time that the subject property has remained undeveloped or vacant as zoned a factor in this consideration? See, no. No. <laughs> Number four, would the request correct an error in the application of these regulations? No. no. Five, is the request caused by changed or changing conditions in the area of the subject property? And if so, what is the nature and significance of such changed or changing conditions? I don't believe no change there are no area. changes. Number six, do adequate sewage disposal and water supply and all other necessary public facilities, including street access, exit, access or exit, or can they be provided to serve the uses that would be permitted on the subject property? Yes. Seven. Would the subject property need to be platted or replatted in lieu of dedications made for rights of way, easements, access, control, or building setback lines? No. Eight, would a screening plan be necessary for existing and or potential uses of the subject property? Yes. Yes. Nine, are suitable vacant lands or buildings available or not available for development that currently has the same zoning as is requested? No. Number 10, if the request is for business or industrial uses, are such uses needed to provide more services or employment opportunities? Yes. Say yes. Yes. 11, is the subject property suitable for the current zoning to which it has been restricted? Yes. yes. 12, to what extent would removal of the restrictions, i.e. the approval of the zoning request, detrimentally affect other property in the neighborhood? Staff has said no detriment is perceived. Same. I'd have to agree. With screening, yeah. Well, I agree, no detriment. 13, would the request be consistent with the purpose of the zoning district classification and the intent and purpose of these regulations? 
Staff uh, mentions the intent of the B5 Highway dis Business di District is to provide a location for businesses which might not be compatible with prime retail areas. I would agree. That was, mm -hmm. that, that is. 14. Is the request in conformance with the comprehensive plan and does it further enhance the implementation of the plan? Staff mentions a comprehensive plan suggests that more intense business uses should be located along the US 54 highway corridor. Agreed. We'd agree. Until we expand that into the freeway, we probably right. that ain't gonna happen. <laughs> 15, what is the nature of the support or opposition to the request? I believe we've heard from both sides on that. None at this time. None at this no. time, I agree. Or just yes, they support it. Yeah. Sixteen. Are there any informational materials or recommendations available from knowledgeable persons or experts which would be helpful in its evaluation? Staff mentions approval condition upon installation of the required screening fence, screening along the south property line and around any materials or equipment stored outdoors. We would agree with that. 17. By comparison, does the relative gain to the public health, safety, and general welfare outweigh the loss in property value or the hardship imposed upon the applicant by not approving the request? That's no. No. One that's in A, that one's in A. I think uh, on 16, it's important to denote the east property line as well, not just the south. That is important to me. That's, yep. yeah, for the screening, yes, mm -hmm. that's true. South and east. So it would be the south screen fencing line. along the south as well as east property lines. Correct. <laughs> okay. We have gone through all of the 17 findings and factors. I hope some of you were picking out some appropriate reasons that we could support this well, I'd say number 16 for sure 16 and 8 but I think 15 is also relevant because there is no opposition correct mm -hmm. yeah so 8, 15, and 16. Are we in consensus there with those three? the body here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 8, okay. That will make it easier. And we need a motion. I move that having considered the evidence at the hearing and the factors 8, 15, and 16 to evaluate the special use application, I, William Schnauber, move that we recommend to the governing body the case number SU2017-01 be approved for the establishment of a plumbing and restoration service in the B5 Highway Business District based on the findings of the Planning Commission as recorded in the summary of this hearing. With the conditions? With the conditions 5, 6, 15, and 16 attached. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. I think uh, the, the conditions that we were looking for was the screening fence? On yeah, the, I think that was included in 16, eight. yeah. If you, if you 15. Could put that in 16. Motion. Okay. If you could put that in your motion so that it would be part of the zoning ordinance. Oh, okay. Okay, by not mention by mentioning the number it doesn't in okay. Make an amendment to it. It's uh, so we have a, an amendment to the motion and that is to have it be approved conditioned. So this is modified uh Approved, approved and approved conditioned upon the installation of required screening fencing 
uh, along the south property line and east property lines um, of the adjoining residential property. Of the adjoining residential property. Yeah, that's what we're looking to screen. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Yes. Of the yeah. <laughs> Bill, do you accept that amendment? I accept that amendment. And I'll second. We have a motion. We still have a motion and a second. Thank you, Les. And all in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. I do have some closing re remarks. Um, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out tonight. Um, we also uh, have a, uh, this will go to the governing body on August 8th at 7 p.m. and a, uh, protest petitions against the special use uh, but not uh, directed at the Planning Commission's recommendations as such may be received by the City Clerk uh, for 14 days after tonight, i.e. August 1st, uh, no later than 4.30 p.m. If there are properly signed protest petitions with accurate legal descriptions from the owners of record of 20% or more of the real area, total real area, within the official area of notification, both inside and outside the city, not counting public street rights away uh, or specific statutory uh, excluded property, then such a change will not be passed except by a three-fourths vote by all members of the city council. Thank you. Next case. I'll make a motion. We. Uh Recess the Planning Commission and convene the Board of Zoning Appeals. I second it. We have a motion by Lynn and a second by William. We have... All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. This is a BZA case V 2017-06. This is um, a a public application filed by the Kansas Office Park requesting a variance of a 15-foot to a 20-foot uh, vision triangle to allow a single-faced multi-tenant sign within five feet of the street intersection property corner of the property zoned B1 um, office business district. Uh, the applicant desires to construct a new monument uh, sign I think with tenant signage on it um, in the existing non-conforming uh, perimeter fence. Uh, the proposed location is in conflict with the required 20-foot vision triangle at the intersection of Central and 159th. This is the northeast corner if you're following along. Uh, but the, the, but this, uh, this uh, obstruction uh, would would not be a uh, see here, but it would not create a greater visual obstruction than the existing fence. And staff sees no reason not to approve the request pending the outcome of the hearing. So, mm -hmm. seems to be. Somewhat straightforward. This uh, I might just ask less uh, one detail or a couple details maybe. Uh, this sign is not in the street right of way. Is that correct? Correct. The right. street right of way oh. come, comes to a 90 degree intersection just out in front of this sign. Okay. And the proposal is to put the monument sign on plus or minus a 45 degree angle. Sure. To the right of way line. And. I, it appears that there's uh, plenty of setback and it doesn't imp mm -hmm. imp impede on any vision triangles so, uh, from my from the pictures that have been provided yep I agree and are they there's no plans in immediate or long term to uh, add right turn lanes at that intersection where that site vision would be possibly um, impeded or we don't have plans at this time for a right turn lane. Okay. I well, uh, we've got those cement things there. They 
get too close, they'll have to have those moved anyway. So. <laughs> okay. But they're going to interfere. Presumably, all of those columns are off of this street right away. Yeah. It appears so. And the sign is too. Yeah. All right. Um, everybody have a chance to look through the variance report. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Any other questions from staff? Not here. Mm -mm. Any questions of the applicant? I think they may be here tonight. Um, do you guys? Would you like to hear from the applicant, or I think they provide a pretty, it pretty was good thorough. Yeah, very I was, thorough. It's impressing. Do they have anything to say? Yeah. Do you guys? Would you like to speak? <laughs> I mean, you recapped it really well. Okay. Thank you. Okay, very good. And you guys provided a good package here. Yes, you did. Yeah. So, um, pretty open shut, isn't it? Let's see here. So again, we'll go through a couple little housekeeping items. There's no disqualifications on this case that we need to. Nope. No one needs to disqualify themselves. Uh, this this case was uh, notified in the Gazette, uh, Butler County Gazette Times Gazette, on June 24th, 2017, and all notices were mailed uh, to the applicant and 19 owners of record of real property um, on June 21st. And uh, so 20 days has expired. Um, elapsed between now and then and so I declare that proper notification has been given any ex parte communication on this application mm -hmm. no okay everybody understand the request yep yes okay at this time we'll open it up to the public if there's no one from the public that wants to speak I see none we'll go ahead and close the public comment So, is there any deliberation that uh, we need to speak to on this? I don't think so. No, nope. I don't see any either. We do have a, a handful of, of evidence that we need to review. Um, Lynn, would you like to go through that? Items one through. Oh, okay. Thank you. I was already past that. This one? Does yep. the evidence yep. demonstrate that? Okay. Yes. The particular physical surrounding shape and topographical conditions of the specific property involved would result in a practical difficulty and unnecessary hardship upon or for the owner, leasee, um, occupant, as distinguished from mere inconvenience if the provisions of these regulations were literally enforced because the existing wrought iron fence with the brick columns already in coach in in coach yeah, encroach in the visual triangle <clears throat> that's what we were discussing earlier mm -hmm. <clears throat> the request for a variance is not based exclusively upon desire of the owner leasee occupant applicant to make more money out of the property because the owner simply wants to identify identification wants an identification sign for the large office building which i agree with the granting of the variance will not materially detriment detrimental or in injurious injure people well to other property or improvements in the neighborhood in which the subject property is located because the existing wrought iron <coughs> fence with the brick columns already encroaches upon that visual triangle. The proposed variance will not impair an adequate, adequate supply of light or air to adjacent properties, substantially increase congestion on the public street or road 
increase the danger of fire, endanger uh, the public safety, or substantially diminish or impair property value within the neighborhood because the existing wrought iron fence with the brick columns already encroaches upon the visual triangle. Well, they like using that phrase, don't they? <laughs> All right, now we have some specific uh, conditions that we need to go through, items one through five. Um, I'll go ahead and take that. Uh, number one, uh, we have to ensure that this variance requested arises from such conditions that are unique to the property in question and which is not ordinarily found in the same zoning district and is not created by an action or, an, or actions by other, the property owner or applicant. And I think, uh, again, the same, same thing we've been talking about because the existing wrought iron fence with the brick columns already encroaches in the site triangle. And, and uh, we have number two, uh, that the granting of this variance will not adversely affect the rights of adjacent property owners and for the same reasons. And number three, that the strict application of the provisions of these regulations from which the variance is requested will constitute unnecessary hardship upon the property owner um, re uh, represented in the application. And because the property owner wants to the identification uh, for the large building and yes, it is appropriate. And number four, that the variance desire will not adversely affect the public health, safety, morals, order, convenience, prosperity, or general welfare uh, because uh, uh, the existing wrought iron fence and brick columns already encroach in the vision triangle. And number five, that the granting of this variance uh, desired will not be op opposed to the general spirit and intent of these regulations uh, because it, the same conditions there. All right. So we've gone through everything we can go through, I think, tonight on this case, except for our, our, our uh, motion. And anybody want to take that on? Where is it? I'll go ahead and have it. Okay. Having considering the evidence at the hearing and determined the findings of the fact and the variance report as amend, well, not as amended. Um, we have found, it's been found to exist uh, that support of all five conditions are set out in section 10, 107 D1 of the zoning regulations and KSA 12759 E of the state statutes which are necessary for granting variance. I, Brian Lindeback, move that uh, the chairperson be authorized to sign a resolution granting a variance for case number BZA V 2017-06 as requested. I'll second. All right. Mo motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. I think we're almost done. Uh, let's see. I Make do a motion we adjourn the Board of Zoning Appeals and reconvene the Planning Commission. Just, uh, oh, oh, just, oh, just a hold. Oh, just a minute. <laughs> I almost <laughs> forgot. I almost forgot our closing <laughs> remarks. Uh, again, uh, this resolution will be prepared by and um, by the applicant um, and be available to the applicant on July 31st, 2017. If anyone is aggrieved by this decision or further appeal, can be made to the district court uh, to determine reasonableness within 30 days after the resolution is signed and filed with the zoning administrator. Thank you. Okay. Motion. We have a motion by Lynn to adjourn the I'll Board second. of Zoning Appeals and a second by Tyson. All in favor? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Moving on here. We have. We have a final. See, everybody else is leaving. Yeah. yeah, I think we know who's here. We have a final PUD. This is a review and approval of the Prairie Point at Cornerstone Final Plan Unit Development Plan. Uh, staff knows of no reason not to recommend approval on the final PUD. 
condition on the receipt of required petitions and for improvements and all guarantees. Um, this was, we did a zone change for this recently, I believe it was at the last meeting. Uh, this looks to be their first phase of the final of the preliminary uh, PUD. Any anything of note here, Les, uh, that we should be aware of? I'm sure y'all remember the zoning case to amend the planned unit development from the last meeting. This plat reflects about one third of that property. It's to be developed in three phases over the course of time. Uh, staff, city engineer, are satisfied with the plat and all of the required submittals. Okay. And so, looks like they've provided you everything you've asked for. Is that right? Okay. I did see just two uh, two things on the the face of the final plan unit development plan on sheet one, where the uh, shows the the lots. I think um, I, lot four on the north line of lot four of block A. Um, I think there needs to be a dimension of that that utility easement I presume that's a 20 foot utility easement as opposed to a 25 maybe I or maybe I so we, we can probably have a look at that and just have the applicant that's <laughs> correctly dimensioned or noted and the only other thing I saw was the drainage and utility easement along the east property line um, is offset by a, I presume, a wall easement that's not labeled along the east property line, but I think it probably should be labeled. And then I think the 15 foot drainage and utility easement there on that east property line should be a 20 foot to allow the utilities to cross under the wall and onto the adjoining property. I do believe the drainage I believe runs to the east is that correct or does it run north south I'll let the applicants engineer respond okay. to all three of those okay I, I believe they're covered good evening commissioners my name is Chris Bohm from Ruggles and Bohm here on behalf of the applicant and um, I can address a couple of things. One, the dimensions, no problem, not a problem at all. Um, we went with the 15 foot drainage and utility easement adjacent to the wall easement on the east line just for the <coughs> facilitating building the, the actual units that will be on the site um, and trying to be efficient with the use of the ground. We would contemplate in the future, even though there would be a wall there someday, an adjacent platter would also provide some type of an easement on their property in the future. So the net effect would be a wider easement, perhaps even a 30 foot with a with a 10 foot strip for wall or I doubt you'd need another wall easement. So uh, we'd ask for the 15 to be considered. We've we've worked with staff diligently on this layout and we've been back and forth and it's been a very productive process. So I hope that answers the question at hand. I think the only question I would have is if there's a sewer line or something in that that uh, that the property to the west would have access to it. Whereas the wall would prohibit, the wall easement would prohibit the access to those utilities and that, the connection of those utilities. And so that's all I'm, I'm pointing out. And if, if it's desired that there's no connection, I guess we can honor that. We, it, um, we were charged with front loading the sewer on this development. So yeah. in my view, the adjacent property wouldn't utilize a rear yard sewer. They would okay. more than likely come in on whatever road system they established on their property. So. And the, the, the outfall of the drainage goes a little further south than this, is that correct? Correct. Okay. Good. And I'd stand for any other questions. I'm done. That's fine with me. Okay. Anything else? Brian, in the owner's uh, dedications, it does mention that utilities are permitted to cross the wall. Easements. Okay. 
Uh, but there's no easement there in this case. Correct. There's no easement, but utilities are allowed to cross. To cross. Easement. So if a, a if an, a facility was in that easement, the abutters could connect. Okay. Was the intent of that language? Thank you. Okay. Alrighty. Um, no one's here to no public hearing on this or I mean, no no doesn't look like there's anybody else here to talk about it so any other comments uh, oh. yeah. any deliberation at the, the, the bench here okay mm -hmm. entertain a motion I move that the Prairie Point and Cornerstone final pl PUD plan be approved. I second it. Motion by William, second by Lynn. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes unanimous. Need to keep quiet for some of these other people that say so. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I think we're just about there. Thank you for uh, coming out tonight. So we have some planning commission member organization item number nine. So has it been a year already? That's what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. All right. Uh, does anybody want to take on a different roles? You can uh, probably take my name off the subdivision committee. Okay. And another thing, I'm probably getting ready to retire from work. If I retire from work, I'll probably retire from this because I'm going to start traveling. That's a plan. Now, my yeah. wife, right now, my wife can't travel, so we're going to. But anyway, I, uh, uh, my work schedule don't allow me to come to work, come to that at 530 anymore. I okay. don't get home till about 630. All right. So. Yeah, we can take you off of the uh, subdivision committee. Sign for me up for that retirement thing. That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what? I said, oh, sign me up for that retirement. On the plan. retirement. Oh. He was once on the retirement commission. Yeah, and if you happen yeah. to find somebody that just can't wait to get on this committee, <laughs> just let me know. I can, I'll make room for him. You'll make room, okay. Um, anybody else want to take Lynn's spot on the subdivision committee? Well, I don't think we need really many, or already there. Well, sometimes Which it's we tough. We can to always use more. Yeah, sometimes it's tough to get everybody always get there. So looking to get there, yeah. Seems to be a good showing of two or three. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Uh -huh. All right, I'll take a spot. All right. Tyson, well, you seems already like there, seems Tyson. that you're already on there. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> nice try. By <laughs> default. Good. Well, you got Tyson on there. Uh, I feel like that. <laughs> Does anybody want the chairmanship for this coming session? I think it's appropriate having Mike in there. No, I mean like the the chair, the, the chairman or a chairperson. Huh? Anybody, anybody want to take over my my oh. spot here? No, I think oh, I thought you were talking about something. <laughs> on the planning, <laughs> no, on the planning commission. Oh, okay. I nominate to leave <laughs> all of that the way it is. I think okay. William would be an excellent choice. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I think I understood. Be, I understood the question. Okay. <laughs> I think William would be a good choice. Yeah. All right. Well, so I'm, I'm fine where I'm at. If everybody's good. Let's just let's I just. Think, I think it's a good combo right now. Yeah. Okay. All right. So Mike doesn't get to speak since he's not here. So he gets to stay vice chair. Yeah. Yes. I think he wants to. Okay. He's fine. Okay. Very well. Thanks, Dan. And then you'll still stay secretary then. Yes. Sir. All right. Great. Got that sorted. He likes that because he didn't get involved. I, I get to sign my name. Just sign. In your, yeah, that's good. No? Well, then uh, we've got our subdivision committee pretty well established. And um, yeah, so. Good job, people. Okay. Any other? Oh, any other comments? So we need a. We probably need a motion uh, to approve uh, as presented, with the exception of Lynn Heath being removed from subdivision committee. Anybody want to tackle that motion? Oh, I make a motion we uh, approve the uh, list as presented. 
With, yeah, I mean, as now presented. <laughs> now, now presented with the exception of Lynn Heath on subdivision. Okay. And I'll, I'll go ahead and second that. We have a motion by Lynn, second by Brian. And I think we're about. All those in favor? We're about. Yeah, oh yes. We need all, all those in favor say aye. 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 Yes, aye. Okay. And I think we're just ready to. Member items. Anybody have any member items? No, sir. Okay. Everybody staying cool? Yeah. All right. You can make a motion to adjourn. Adjourn. All right, Stephanie. Yes. Stephanie, motion to adjourn. Lynn, uh, seconds. All in favor, say aye. I Second, aye. aye. Okay. Two before I. Oh, that's good. I want to retire before I'm